Today in the market was a fairly red day, especially for tech and many of the stocks that we cover here on this channel. Quantum stocks, a couple of them did really well, including Rigetti, LAES, CLSQ, and a new stock, O1 Quantum, that I've been tracking and I actually made a position in. So we're gonna talk about a new quantum stock that I've never covered before, which is always exciting. It's exciting to see the sector growing and some names getting some recognition. So we're gonna cover today some news that's driving the market. We're gonna look at market futures, and we're going to cover O1 Quantum, CLSQ, Rigetti, and IonQ. I actually made a trade on IonQ today that I'm gonna share with you all as well. With that being said, we're gonna to try to get in and out of here in about 15 to 18 minutes is my goal. So do me a huge favor if you haven't already, hit the like button. And if you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. All right, let's get into it. So taking a look at the stock heat map today, we can see that Meta really dragged down the whole market. And surprisingly, Amazon had some pretty bearish sell-off. And we can see in aftermarket today that actually Amazon and Apple did very well for their earnings, to say the least. So we should we're seeing some green futures, and we'll look at that in just a moment. Microsoft also sold off as well. So if we look at Amazon and just get kind of a quote for what Amazon is looking for, we closed at $222 a share and we're up $28.64 in after hours, a 12.8%. This is tens of billions of dollars of investment going into amazon.com in the after hours. So really amazing. Congratulations if you're in Amazon. Amazon for me, is one of my highest conviction mag seven holdings and one of my biggest buy position size as far as share count. If we look at the futures, we can see that with these good earnings from Apple and Amazon, NASDAQ futures are up 1.18%. So it's likely that we see a gap up tomorrow unless there's some sort of news that shakes the markets. Everything's looking pretty green. The Russell's fighting its way into green on the futures. Now let's take a look at our quantum watch list. And we had some uh, an interesting divergence. So today we saw the wider market kind of sell down and a lot of widespread weakness in the market because of the sell-off of Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, Meta especially, billions of dollars sold there. But we saw some quantum stocks actually still do well, which is a promising sign. There's a there's kind of we're going into this earning season for quantum, and I'm very hopeful that we're going to see some surprises. I think INQ is potentially going to set the tone for these quantum earnings, and maybe Rigetti with their system sales is going to be able to show some increase on their revenue, which would be nice. And we can see that Seal SQ is continuing their rally and actually was above $7 a share. Rigetti up almost 8% on the day, had strong price action throughout the day, and D-Wave continues its recovery. So we'll look at those charts. We can see Google is a beast. Remember, I put out a video on this channel when Google was $180 a share and said this was the most undervalued MAG7 stock, and now it has increased $100 per share, and that wasn't too long ago. And IBM also doing well. Take a look at this other watch list. Not too much more going on here. We can see that UAV is a drone stock that I that I invest in it was up a little bit, but very much red down the board. So hopefully we get a, a strong Friday and a strong market. Now on this emerging quantum list that I have, we had O1 Quantum, ticker symbol O-O-N-E-F, have a 25% day. And I actually have had a position since about 70 cents a share. I'm going to kind of explain, why don't we just jump right into it? So basically I went over to their website and I looked around for, okay, what is this company? What do they do? They kind of operate in the same space as Quantum Emotion, LAS, CLSQ, this post-quantum cybersecurity. This is an investor deck I found on the website. So what is Q-Day? That's when quantum computers will crack current encryption methods. What separates Owen Quantum? For us, four US patents, two granted and two pending. They have some different uh, product lines. They're talking about 
some different partners that they have. I haven't really heard of any of these companies. This is a very, very small company. It's Canadian based. Let's get some more context. I actually ran this through Gemini. Um, I like to use Gemini and GPT to kind of see how each model is developing. So Owen Quantum has some main business units which focus on PQC, post-quantum cybersecurity, and development of its iron cap product line. It offers a suite of remote access services and products under the names I'm in touch and I'm on call. And the location is in Canada, similar to QNCCF, which is quantum emotion. And there's approximately 11 to 14 people. So this is a this is an OTC. This isn't on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. This is the definition of risk. This is a super, super, super risky play, a risky stock, as they have they are not proven with their financials. They're not proven in any way, shape, or form. But I like to place, as you guys know, you followed me for a long time. I like to widely invest in the sector of quantum and place multiple bets because I think that some of them hopefully will will uh, play out in a, in a good way. So stock twits had some information and I was scrolling through as I was reading and people are talking about QNCCF versus O uh, O O N E F. I'm not even used to saying that ticker symbol, but so one of these guys here this morning said back in May, this little gem was trading around 13 cents. The steady accumulation has been impressive with very little volatility, something that's rare with sub dollar stocks that tells you everything you need to know. So it's strong hands and dying to break above a dollar and beyond. OK, so somebody is very bullish on it, uh, doesn't really mean much. It's still very, very risky. It's an OTC. But for me in my portfolio and my high risk tolerance, I I have made a position in O1 Quantum. I have a few thousand shares in some different portfolios of mine, and I'm just along for the ride. If this goes to zero, then I'm OK with that because I believe in what they're doing and I like kind of what I'm seeing as far as the price action. I took a look at their website. They are focusing on this post-quantum cybersecurity. It's just kind of a play within a play within a play, and maybe it doesn't work out. I just want to give a lot of disclaimers. When people watch these videos, I don't want them to go out and just like buy without thinking. You, you must do your own due, due diligence and research. So if we look back, and we can see that we're definitely in breakout territory. It moved above this resistance of about 50 cents a share, had some sell off down to 11 cents in April when we had the tariffs and everything. And now with kind of this quantum exuberance in the increased invent investment in quantum, there's been this breakout and it looks very bullish. It kind of reminds me of quantum emotion. Maybe it follows a similar path. So can't put enough disclaimers on this. Be very careful with stocks like this, but I have made a position and let's look at Seal SQ. All right, so Seal SQ had a 10% day in a very red market. Remember, if we look at that uh, heat map again, not a lot of bullishness in the wider market, but Seal SQ is kind of in what could be a, a little bit of a coil here that's happening where maybe Lace is wanting to kind of explode higher. There's th that's when kind of the we see the lows are validated, the highs are validated, and we're starting to get into a tighter trading range where maybe we see some volume come in. And we know there's some good news coming for CLSQ, at least according to Carlos and the interview I did with him on the channel. They're going to make some announcements in Las Vegas or officially release their chip. They're working on US partnerships. So I still think this is a pretty exciting stock. Of course, it carries risk. Of course, in September, just 50 days ago, this was a two and a half dollar stock. So of course, there's downside risk to all of quantum stocks and many of the risky stocks that we talk about. But it's been holding above this 516 actually since this breakout on October 25th. It got rejected off of 518, excuse me. So this was October 7th and the breakout was on October 9th. So it's actually been holding above for the whole month of October above five. So very, if you were early in CLSQ, you got to be happy with that return because you've already got almost a double, if not a triple there. In fact, we can just measure that out. 
I want to remind investors, you know, like 175% return. Think about how many, how many years in VU or in the QQQ it would take to get a return like that. And that's the great thing about picking an individual stock, but also it can go the other direction really quickly. So you got to manage risk and set stop losses. And I sound kind of doom and gloom, but I, I just want to, I, I, in every video I make, uh, when we're talking about, especially like riskier stocks like this, I just want to talk about the risk because there has been downside. We did see, we're going, we're moving over to Rigetti now. I want to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So there from Rigetti, in just a matter of nine trading days, we moved down 40%. So we actually are seeing on the four hour candles, some increased bullishness and some promising signs. You know, I've been saying that it's kind of in this no man's land where there could be some kind of uh, sell off and reversal, and maybe it goes down further from here. But I'm actually starting to see, especially on this four hour, that Rigetti might be looking for a gap fill up to 46 and maybe up to 48.23. Those are numbers that are on watch for me. In a base case, I think we kind of just hang out between 40 and maybe 44, maybe 46. Again, we can kind of look to the left and see where previously Rigetti bonked its head on those four hour candles. And we can see 46 and 4823 would definitely come into play. And it does look like we may have more bullishness in the wider market. So we'll see if that happens in a bearish case. I would see us so we'd come back down and retest this 33.94 and stay below $40 a share. And finally, IonQ. So I'll talk to you about a play that I made today on IonQ. And this is an earnings play because earnings is coming up for IonQ very soon. In fact, I'll just pull that up here. So IonQ is reporting earnings on Wednesday, November 5th. And we've actually seen a pretty substantial fall from the top of the wick to the bottom of the wick, a 39% fall. I just want to remind all quantum investors that INQ is the main reason that this big quantum rally started. Their analyst day, their acquisitions of Oxford Ionics, of LightSync, of all the acquisitions they made and the, the capital raises they've done through dilution at a premium to bolster their balance sheet. So INQ is going into this earnings with the strongest balance sheet they've ever had going into any earnings and with companies within their umbrella. What I told the Discord today is there's there's potentially recovery a 36% upside just to retest all-time highs. And I did give a price target earlier this year of INQ at $100 a share. I still believe if they bring the goods or if they continue on their technical milestones and their roadmap, that this company will become more and more value. So I actually purchased some common shares of INQ today under $60. And I actually made a leverage play, a targeted play, $70 strike call option expiring next Friday. And what I'm hoping to do with that is capture some of the run up to earnings, the anticipation for earnings, and potentially hold some of those contracts through earnings if there's a recognition of revenue improvement or any other improvements they may talk about on their uh, earnings call. So I'm really looking forward to INQ. Quantum is a super exciting industry. There's been so many awesome stories. I'm really excited to share with you all that we have some exciting upcoming interviews here on the channel. So we're going to talk to the CEO of Quantum Emotion um, next Monday. I know a lot of you uh, have been following the channel, are interested in Quantum Emotion. So we'll be talking to him. We're going to be talking to the CEO of Haiku. Uh, Haiku is a privately held company, but I want to, I want everyone to kind of like learn about the application layer. We already have an interview done with a company called Quantum Elements, which is a startup in California area. I just need to pull that together and probably we'll be posting that sometime this weekend. So look out for that. And it's very informative again about the application layer and using AI in quantum. 
We also have a scheduled interview with the CEO of Inflection, currently trading under the ticker CCCX. If that SPAC merger is to work out, then Inflection would move into this CCCX ticker and take over the ticker symbol. And some traders are positioning themselves for that. So lots of excitement coming up and we're even planning some other things. So I'm really excited to bring all of this information to you all. And thank you for following the channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you really enjoyed that content. If you would like to support this YouTube channel, I have three different membership levels starting at $4.99 a month. They include Quantum Bull, Gold Bull, and Diamond Bull. Head over and click the plus button. You can learn more about these memberships and find out which one is right for you.